History of Pripyat, Part 4 The First Days When Viktor Bryukhanov first arrived in Chernobyl, it was a cold winter. He was a long way from both home and Moscow on a truly ambitious mission, building the first nuclear power plant in Ukraine. The Soviet Ministry of Energy assigned this to Viktor just a moment ago, but there was not a second to lose. This project was the first time in the ministry would build the nuclear power plant by itself, from scratch. Before, that was reserved for another ministry, a secret one that possessed the knowledge and means to build nuclear devices, including bombs. He arrived in Ukraine with a dream to create many new nuclear power plants across all of the USSR. He imagined himself being responsible for mass-producing reactors that would supply power for every citizen of the Soviet Union and the Warsaw Pact countries. From distant and secluded Siberia, through Caucasus and Ural to Ukraine and Central Europe. But first, he needed to complete the most important project the ministry planned for years – building of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. It was not sure from the beginning that the Pripyat River Vincity would be the right place for the new construction site. The advisors were thinking about multiple locations and there were at least a few most supported ones, including North Kiev, Western Ukraine and the Pripyat River Bank. As we all know now, the last one won. When Viktor arrived at the soon-to-be power plant location, he was fairly anxious. And that wasn't anything surprising. Chernobyl was a typical sleepy town aside from advanced factories and big politics. He checked into the only hotel and when he unpacked his belongings, he realized it would be his home for at least some significant time. Sitting on the bed, the young engineer was probably thinking about the huge responsibility he was given. This could be either a blessing or a curse, especially in the Soviet Union, where the blame was placed at a particular person and group of people if anything would go wrong. And it often did. The project had already been priced. It was expected it would take up to 400 million rubles, which was as a big sum as it sounds. Brukhanov had not only to take care of every single aspect of the project, like hiring the right people, but also to prepare at least some initial schedules and calculate the material needs. He began with a list of materials needed to start the construction and delivered it personally to the state bank in Kiev. However, it wasn't a short route, he traveled that road almost every day by bus. But that was a deep Soviet territory, so often there was no bus. He then hitchhiked, as nobody would care if he complained he didn't have a transport. The task was the task, and no one cared on how would it be done. At the time, he was the only worker and the director of the new power plant, but as he didn't yet have time to attend personal matters, he didn't hire an accountant. So, Viktor received no payment. In the meantime, the leader of the Ukrainian Communist Party, Vladimir Sherbitsky, signed a document confirming the name, and then Viktor Brukhanov was relieved. The project was finally getting into the implementation phase. When thinking about such an important plan, it would be odd for us today to deliberate for months on such a trivial thing as the name. But for the USSR, image and appearances was as crucial as completing the project itself, maybe even more. Sometime later, Brukhanov was standing near an empty field, hearing more and more loud helicopter blades rotating. Freezing a bit, knee deep in the snow, Brukhanov was thinking of simply one thing, to start the construction of the power plant which took the name from the nearby town. The party officials from Moscow, including the delegation of different ministers, fought off the deep snow and icy, stingy cold air. The meeting took place where the ambitious project was about to start taking its final form. 33 years old Brukhanov, a dedicated partyman, accompanied them as they gathered near the riverbank. Soon, 
They began to make several toasts, congratulating themselves on moving the project into the next phase. A photographer assigned by the state captured every moment, from the helicopter touching the ground to the different officials posing with a shovel. They all stood aside in the snow, watching Minister Neporozhny cutting the stone-cold ground, millimeter by millimeter, with the same shovel they all posed with just minutes before. It was February the 20th, 1970, and the construction of the so-called most advanced and magnificent nuclear power plant in the world has just begun. Thank you for being here with me and be sure to watch the previous episodes of the full prepared history and other videos on our Chernobyl stories playlist. Next time we will tell you about the location of the power plant, so stay in touch. Take care, stay safe and see you next week.